In today's video, we're going to dive into Adobe Dimension and we're going to go over all of the basics for the software. So this is an intro to Adobe Dimension. Let's go ahead and get started. So if you've never used Adobe Dimension before, it's a really powerful 3D software created by Adobe. It allows you to create 3D very fast using high quality models, materials, and lighting. And here on their website, you can take a look at some of the examples. So not only can you design a logo or a label that needs to go on a product in another software and bring it into Dimension and create something that looks photorealistic like these product samples, you can also create an entire scene in Adobe Dimension. For me personally, I like to use Adobe Dimension with Adobe XD to create designs like this. So this illustration was created in Adobe Dimension. Same thing for this one. I created this sushi with the chopsticks here for this food delivery website. So overall, there's a lot you can do with it. So let's dive into it and I'll show you guys some of the tools I like to use and the most common things I use in my workflow with it. So you can guys can hopefully get a good understanding of the software if you've never used it before. So this is the home tab. This is what you'll be greeted with when you load up Adobe Dimension. And I'm just going to hit create new. So this works similar to Adobe XD. If you've ever used that, we have the design tab and then the render tab. So there's different tabs for different things. So in the design tab, you have your canvas in the middle, and this is your 3D space that you're going to be working in, as well as the assets here on the left for your models, your materials, lighting, and your images. The toolbar is on the far left and on the right. It's similar to Adobe XD again, where there's properties over here. Depending on what you have selected, you'll be able to edit these. You also have some actions and you have the scene itself and everything that makes up the scene. So you have the environment, you have the camera, and then if you add things like the sphere, you can see that is added over here into the scene. A few other things here like the zoom in the center. This is really handy for fitting the canvas to your overall workspace. There's some camera controls and a preview render. Uh, so that is the design tab makeup. We'll go into detail more about everything here in just a minute. And then you have the render tab. And this is where once you're done, you're ready to render. It's going to render the current view of the design tab. So wherever the camera is positioned here, it will render out here in the render tab. So here you can have the file name. You can choose the quality. I usually go with high and you can choose a PSD. I go with 32 bits and I use the PSD. That way I can remove the background. It's just very easy to open it up and just turn off the background layer or you can export it as a PNG if you don't need to do that. Uh, so that's the two options there and then your save path and then you render it. So back to the design tab, let's go over the tools. I think you guys need to know when you're just starting. So the four tools I think you need to learn to use Adobe Dimension is the selection tool, the orbit tool, the pan tool and the dolly tool. So first off the selection tool, you just use this to click on objects, pretty straightforward. Uh, you can also drag objects around with it. So I'm just clicking and dragging to move this object around in 3D space. Also, when you have an element selected, you'll notice you have these handles. So the cones on the end are for moving the object on that axis. The squares are for scaling on that axis. And then the circle dots here are for rotating on that axis. So here I'm rotating on the Z or Z axis. So it's a really quick way to manipulate this object in 3D space. Just by clicking and selecting it, you can make your precise movements to get your object exactly where you want it. This selection tool is V on the keyboard. And when you have an element selected, you don't necessarily have to use these handles. You can use the boxes over here. So if I want to rotate it, I can simply click and drag on these numbers or I can input them manually to whatever I would like. So you can set all of these over here as well as you have some extra adjustments you can make. The next three tools are for using the camera, which is extremely important because we are the camera. So if I zoom out here, it's going to render exactly what we see here. So we need to be able to move the camera effectively. So we have the orbit tool, which is one on the keyboard, and this can orbit around by just clicking and dragging to rotate around our scene. Next is the pan tool, and this is for moving left and right and kind of up and down here, just panning through the 3D space. And the pan tool is two on the keyboard. And finally, the dolly tool, which is three on the keyboard, just click and drag forward or back to zoom in or out. Kind of like having a camera on a dolly in real life, kind of that smooth zoom in and out just by clicking and dragging. When you're moving around your scene and adjusting your elements, you might find a good angle that you want to render at, or at least come back to later on. You can go up here to camera bookmarks and just select the plus. And anytime you go away from this, you want to come back, you can just click that 
and go back to view one or whatever you named it. So it's a really great way to save your position so that you can adjust things freely without having to worry about getting that perfect angle lined up again. You can just go back to it. Also up here you have the camera undo and redo as well as frame selection, which just frames the scene up nicely for you. And then you have the show and hide the render preview. Just by toggling this on, it gives you a good preview of the render without having to go do a full blown render, which takes a lot of time. So it's very grainy, but at least gives you some light and some shadow just so you can see how your scene is going to look rendered. So here on the left, we have the assets and you can easily just click on these to add the new ones to the scene, or you can just drag them in by hand into any position you would like. You've got the basic shapes, which give you a little bit more controls for modeling. You have the free models they give you. If you have an Adobe stock membership, you can always get more or you can model in something like Blender and drag the OBJ file actually into Adobe Dimension, which is really great. And then you have some more detailed shapes down here at the end of the models. So for now, I just have this cube in my scene. Next over here, you can filter by materials. And just like anything over here in the assets panel, these are some presets that you can adjust and make them exactly what you want, but they're a good starting point. So if you want a plastic, you can apply that to your cube, maybe even a gelatin. There's a bunch of different ones in here that are really cool and they're all completely customizable here in the property section. So I'm just going to grab my cube and apply a plastic and let's go with a nice lighter plastic, something almost white colored. Next is the lights and the images. So for lighting, the directional lights and environmental lights are your two options. So if I quickly go into my scene, you can see I have this environment object and that is the entire environment of the scene. So if I click on that, there is an environment lighting. So this can be turned on and off by just clicking the eye icon there. Uh, but this is the image that's applied to the entire scene. So if I preview this, you can see what this one looks like. But if I add something like this really bright neon, you can see my cube turns blue because my environment is bright neon and that's reflecting onto my cube. So those are our environmental lights. So if I turn these off, my cube goes completely black because there is no light whatsoever in the scene at the current moment. So that's where directional lights come in. If you want a more detailed lighting system, you can use one of these three point lights, pretty popular. I'm going to go with a sunlight. So it looks like natural sunlight. And you can see that is here underneath the environment. So if I collapse that by clicking on the globe, you can see that the lights are under environment and that's where they're housed if you ever need to find them. So here we have the sun on. Let's go ahead and preview this. It looks like the sun is shining on this object, producing this really harsh shadow here because it's directly pointing down on this. For now, I'm going to toggle off the sun and back on my environment and we'll just add a nice studio lighting. The final thing is the images, and these are applied to the environment itself. So if I select environment, you can see the background, that's where this is going to be applied. So if we want this in a city drop, we can do that. And then we can adjust the angle of the cube to look a little bit more like it belongs here. Probably gonna have a hard time getting a good angle really quickly like this, but let's just put it like that. And we do a render. You can see our cube looks like it's just sitting here on the concrete. Of course, the lighting's a little off. We need to match that to this scene image. So that's one thing you want to keep in mind if you're using a background image like this. So let's turn back on our sun and turn our environment light off. Let's see what we got so far. Maybe we need to adjust the rotation of our sun. So it's not exact, but you get the idea and you can make this look like a real built scene. So with that, I think we've went over pretty much everything from here. Just swap over to the render tab and you can select render to get a full image of this exact scene right here. So that's the intro to Adobe Dimension. I'm going to be making more Adobe Dimension tutorials here on the channel with Adobe XD. If you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe for more Adobe Dimension content. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.